All right, how's everybody doing today? This is Mr. Muscarello coming at you, and today we're going to take a look at indeterminate forms and L'Hopital's rule. Now, indeterminate forms for limits are going to be one of these two forms. You're either going to have zero over zero or infinity over infinity. Now, sometimes they're not in that form exactly, there might be other indeterminate forms that we'll have to manipulate to get it into the form of 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. The other indeterminate forms are 0 times infinity, infinity minus infinity, 1 to the infinity, 0 to the 0 power, and infinity to the 0 power. So if we see one of these indeterminate forms, we're going to have to do some math trickery to get it to be 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. Now let's go ahead and take a look at an example. We're going to evaluate the limit as x goes to infinity of x times sine of 1 over x. Now of course the first thing that we always want to try when we're evaluating limits is direct substitution. So if we put in infinity for x we're going to have the limit as x goes to infinity of x times 1 over x and that's going to result in infinity times now the sine of 1 over x that piece when we plug in infinity right there <clears throat> so here in this example we're going to evaluate the limit as x goes to infinity of x times sine of 1 over x. Now when we plug in infinity, we're going to have infinity for x times the sine of 1 over infinity. Well, this piece right here, that's just going to go to sine of 1 over infinity. That's going to be the same thing as sine of 0 because that fraction, 1 over infinity, that's going to go to 0. So we're going to have infinity times sine of 0. Well, sine of 0 is just 1. Sine of 0 is just 0, so we're going to have infinity times 0, which just gives us this form of infinity times 0. Now that's one of our other indeterminate forms, so we're going to have to manipulate that thing to go ahead and get it into either 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. So now let's move on to our math trickery. So what we're going to do is we're going to take x sine of 1 over x and we're going to manipulate this by multiplying this by 1 over x times 1 over x. When we do this, that's going to give us this form here where we're going to have sine of 1 over x over 1 over x. Now if we're going to, now what we're going to do is we're going to take this sine of 1 over x divided by 1 over x, we're going to take that and now we're going to evaluate that limit. So the limit as x goes to infinity of sine 1 over x divided by 1 over x. Now when we go ahead and do this, when we use direct substitution now, sine of 1 over x, when we approach infinity on this, that's going to go ahead and give us 0. And then 1 over x, we know that piece, if we put infinity in for x, that's going to give us 0. So now we've got it into one of our correct indeterminate forms, we've got it as 0 over 0. So what L'Hopital's rule says to do is simply take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator and then reevaluate the limit. Now when we do that, we'll end up with the limit as x goes to infinity. Now you have to be careful, make sure you use the chain rule appropriately negative 1 over x squared times a quantity cosine of 1 over x. So all of that is the derivative of the numerator, sine of 1 over x, and then the derivative of 1 over x, of course, is negative 1 over x squared. And nicely, your limits of x goes to infinity will now be able to work with this form of just cosine of 1 over x. Now we know that when we plug in infinity, 
to 1 over x. That's going to now give us cosine of just plain old 0. And the cosine of 0, we remember from our trig days, is just 1. So all of that, so the limit of this particular function is x1 to infinity of x sine 1 over x. That whole limit just boils down to 1. So that's the end of this example. Stay tuned and be sure that you watch another example for L'Hopital's Rule.